Arizona State University publishes a list of examples of black male privilege. Uh-oh, it's going to get crazy up in here. Getting my popcorn in a cozy chair to watch how the university navigates telling black males about their toxic privilege. I'm Dr. Duke, she's Katie, and let the good times roll. Hello everyone and welcome to the Dr. Duke Show, the only program that has the guts and the tenacity to keep you educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. Today we start at Arizona State University where Humanities Department, and when I say Humanities Department, I mean a lily white department of, of progressive white academics, has now just published a list of black male privilege checklists consisting of 94 points, 94 ways that African Americans have unchecked power. Just, just male. Just male. male. And I think you've, you've got the key. Male. This is white liberal feminists now turning the progressive template on black men. This, my friends, is the revenge of feminism. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. So this actually, it's, created not only to just be kind of a list but you know an educational assembly they they've gone out and done whole uh initiatives that include you know privilege and bias and there's this range of diverse audiences that have gone through this training about these you know the black male privilege uh including benedictine university chandler gilbert community college the arizona department of education the whole arizona department of education has gone through and taken a look and been trained up on this black male privilege checklist uh sienna college university of central oklahoma gateway community college and the university of course of portland now some of the examples, we'll just give you some of them because it's a very, very long list. Well, let's talk, take them one by one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. okay. Because I would postulate to you, Katie, yes. that this is a, now you're beginning to see they, they made a mistake. Oops. As long as you were stereotyping white people and as long as you were bigotry, bigotedly stereotyping white males, you could get away with it because of your weird critical race theory. But now that you're doing it to black men, listen to how utterly racist this sounds, especially coming from the mouth of white progressive liberal women. When I read African-American history textbooks, I will learn mainly about black men. Wait a second. I thought, according to Black Lives Matter, there were no history t textbooks about black men who, or black the, people. It, I but thought- it's history. I, I th wait a second, you're hurting me. The Black Lives Matter, my heroes have told me that there are no, all textbooks are written about racist white people. This is You're true, telling man. me that such a thing exists. When I read African-American history textbooks, I learn mainly about black men. Yes. I, I know. Did they, did, Katie, did they lie to me? They may have. What's, a what's this? Bit. Make me feel better. What's the second? I can rely on the fact that in the near 100-year history, 100-year history it is, of national civil rights organizations such as the NAACP and the Urban League, virtually all of the executive directors have been male. Wait a minute. You mean civil rights has been around, civil rights organizations have been around for 100 years? And I gotta take issue with this. The Civil War was a, the civil, war was a civil rights issue. So you're telling me, Katie, despite what we've been taught by progressive white educators, that there have been civil rights organizations going all the way back to the Civil War? Wait, 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 wait Katie, Katie, mm -hmm. Miss Katie? Um, yes. Were Dr. the Duke. abolitionists involved in trying to get rid of slavery? Uh, no. They, they wait, were. Yes, no. And weren't they trying to, in, to give civil rights to black people? I mean, they Katie, they, you've had who's, his, whose history are you believing you now? Had, you had 1619, Katie. And I'm pretty sure abolitionists. No, there no. Were a lot of Up women until Black anything. Lives Matter, there's there was just nothing. been racism. Just all racism. I'm getting really sweaty here. Okay, well, here's What's the, the third one? one. Make me feel better about Black Lives Matter. I will be taken more seriously as a political leader than black women. Wait, wait, wait. We take black, black men seriously in leadership roles? It's more not than like, black it's, women. I mean, it's not like we've ever had a black president, right? We've never elected no. one, have we? No, because no. Well, it's a, it's a, he's a black man, though, but black women, Oprah. Wait, 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 wait. I get it. I get what they're telling me, Katie, that black women are victims. But are you telling me black men aren't? Are you suggesting that black men victimize mm. black women? What? I'm beginning to have second thoughts about my activism. Give me another bullet point and make mm. me feel like I really do belong with Black Lives Matter. Well, I come from a tradition of humor that's based largely on insulting and disrespecting women, especially mothers. You mean all those mama jokes? You're telling Your me that they're misogyny? Your mama's so big, she sat, what is it, she sat on Skittles and Rainbow popped out? I mean, 
something like that. I'm just saying. Black privilege? Just saying. Um, That ties into most of the lyrics I listen to in hip hop perpetuate the ideas of males dominating women sexually and socially. You mean putting a cap in the hoe? That That's not a nice thing to say. Is that, is that what you're telling me? That's not a very Are you nice telling me when, I, when I wear my pants that. in honor of ethnic inner city communities, I wear my pants around my ankles and my underwear up around my mm. nipples when I, I'm sitting around there low riding and talking about putting caps in hoes? You're telling okay. me that I'm, I'm actually engaging in sexist behavior? But, I'm, yes. but Katie, yes. I'm black male. Oh, yeah. Black men or, can't. Or you're like an 85 year old man who has to pull his underwear off. Katie! That's why he has suspenders. His pants fall down. Anyway. I, were we not told? Were we not told that African Americans cannot engage in this kind of behavior because no, they have no power? No, what sure power do black men have? I'm so confused. What I else know. does the list say? Well, we're going to give you one more because there's too many. And I need to tell you what privilege is and what it is not. Privilege so, is what white people have, right? Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, here you go. I will make significantly more money as a professional athlete than members of the <sighs> opposite sex will. Okay, let's Are talk about that one. you telling me that lesbian odd women like Megan Rapahoe don't make the same kind of money LeBron James? I didn't know that. You mean LeBron James? gets paid a lot more money to dribble a ball than Megan Rappenhoe gets to kick one? Is that what you're telling me? Because I never would have known. You're telling me black men, male mm-hmm. black athletes at the mm-hmm. peak of their, at their, their craft, they don't share their money with black women athletes? Not that I'm aware of. No, they don't You're actually hurting do that. me. You're, you're hurting me. And sarcasm. It's greasy, oh, unctuous geez. sarcasm aside, therein lies the problem. Do you see the nasty stereotyping? Do you see the scapegoating here of blacks? Get used to it because this is what they've been doing to white people for about 30 years now. Now the shoe is on the foot. Now you watch what's going to happen. How soon before we get all the ways that heterosexual black women prey upon transgender black women? It's coming. In fact, we could probably make that list now, couldn't we? If, you're, if we're going to make the list of all the black privilege that black women have, that black trans women don't have, oh, if you're a guy, if you're a black guy with a penis who thinks he's a woman, you can't do this. You can't get the head going, right? Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Nah, won't work. How much privilege is... I just, if I'd have known there was so much privilege in the black community, maybe we wouldn't have let idiots burn down our cities. What do you think? Yeah, well... I do think, and that's why. Anyway, uh, just so everyone's aware, Arizona State University, also this Project Humanities, as it's called, they list these uh, privileges all and, and various things, but they, they want you to know what privilege is not. And they write, Pri- privilege is not, colon, about you. Oh, no, they didn't. Privilege is not your fault. Nah. Privilege is not anything you've done or thought or said. Nah, dog, nah, it dog. It may have allowed you to do or think or say things, but dog. it's not those hey, hey, things. Hey, shawty, shawty. And it's not because of those <sighs> shawty, things. Shawty, no, 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 shawty. I've been taught in my racial ethics class that it is about privilege. It is something you can control if you're white. It's something that you participate in. You're not going to lie to me, dog. I know. I've been, I sat through Rube Goldberg's seminar at Auburn <laughs> University <laughs> from last night's show. I saw through it. I know that this is a privilege of something that belongs to Whitey. How are you projecting that back on me? Girl, why you play that? Why you play me that way? Well, it's uh, privilege not negated. I can't balance my white privilege against my female disadvantage and come out neutral, it says. Privilege is not something you can be exempt from by having a, had a difficult life, okay? Let me make so, it very clear there. to you that this is racism against black people. You are being overtly racist and sexist with this stupid list. You are assuming that all black men, all black people, all black males engage in this kind of behavior. You have erased your rules for white supremacy in order to try to accommodate this nonsense. Yeah, and they're not done because they like to make more lists, this Project Humanities at ASU. They actually just released a pandemic privilege. Oh! Check. Now, is that racial? Because don't tell me blacks can be guilty of pandemic privilege. Well, I think they're trying to gear it towards all you whiteies. Back to all the whiteies. Number one, you have pandemic privilege if you live indoors. Every black person I know lives indoors. Okay. But are they guilty? But they're not because it's not not about you, they say. I thought Mm. blacks and minorities were the hardest hit by COVID. Well, number three, if your racial group has not been disproportionately affected by COVID-19. Also, if you do not live alone or if you have a pet. So basically, if you live with 
anybody else, you are privileged during this pandemic. Um, if you have exercise equipment in your home, anything can be exercise equipment. It's called your body. Do an air squat, do a sit up. You don't need any exercise equipment, but anyway, a lot of us would benefit from doing some more exercise. On the hierarchy of offense, where is, where is pandemic privilege over white uh, black male privilege where would we they need rank to make them in the higher they need to make that list That's you guys really have to explain yourselves better i mean uh, the whole premise of your critical race theory bull nonsense is the idea that white people have all the power, all the privilege, all the history books are written about them, all of that stuff, and now you're telling me that that's not completely true? And don't pretend that you're not hypocrites. Don't pretend that you aren't stereotype, stereotyping and making bigoted generalizations about African-American men, because you are. Just like you're making stereotypical, understa- uh, bigoted statements about all of us who happen to be living through COVID. Quit it, knock it off, you're the real racists. Well, we know you, you know, because of the pandemic, you're privileged if, you know, you're not a student, it said. We didn't even get to that one. So, you know, you might need some help financially in this time. And there are some scholarships out there that you really should apply to, including the Satanic Temple. Yep, Satanic Temple is now offering scholarships to high school grads. So the group, which is based in Salem, Massachusetts, it recently announced a $500, I mean, $500 will get you a one class basically worth of books um they have the devil's advocate scholarship it's called so it's a simple application just two two components uh you first just need to describe what you've done to promote the organization's tenets and mission and then the uh, other question is to describe a teacher who crushed your spirit undermined your self-confidence and made you hate every minute you are forced to be in school now you can do this in an essay form a poem a film or an other creative medium. Look, it's simple. To get that $500, just have an abortion, right? Sacrifice a baby to the altar of progressivism, and you're going to get that scholarship. Didn't didn't the, 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 the Satanists, didn't they come out recently and sue the federal government for the right to kill babies as part of their religion? Religious freedom, according to this group, is our ability to kill babies. If we can't kill babies, the Satanic Center, uh, the satanic center said, if we're not allowed to kill babies as part of our religion, you're discriminating against us for religion. So it's a quick 500 bucks for you girls and guys who think they're girls, because we know mm. guys who think they're girls can get pregnant That's too true. somehow. Go out and murder your baby. Have an abortion, get a Planned Parenthood community activist, sign a sheet that you did indeed sacrifice the blood of your own child on the, the altars of Baal, and you got 500 schmackerons coming no, from No, well, you better do it in the classroom of a teacher who then but, yelled but, at you but, because but, you, but, that's, you, they had to crush your spirit, undermine your self-confidence, make you hate well, every minute you were forced to be in school. Any that's of you, the second Any of you part. who spent five minutes in a Christian school, you're already <sighs> persecuted, right? That's true. Any teacher, any nun, any priest that taught you, any Christian school, any plaid uniforms that you had to wear, you're already, that's a thousand schmanolians. That many? Shmo- yeah. Shmo- Put on a Catholic school, school girl outfit and abort a baby, and it's a you, thousand clans. as a male, do that? I can do that. Oh, I bet you will. Okay. I can do that. Well, Malcolm Jerry, who is the organization's co-founder, actually said the scholarship aims to draw attention to the problems of compulsory, compulsory education, mm-hmm. which I, when he said that, I was like, oh, he actually agrees. You mean like with, the American public schools? Yes. I was gun, like, wow. Public okay. school by gunpoint, you mean, right? Yes. Because I don't know a single, single religious school in this country that you're forced to go to. You know which schools I you are forced to go to? The public ones. This is true. Do I have some now? Am, am I sympathetic with the Satanists? This is what I'm saying. That's what shocked me a little bit. I was like, Man. well. I know we've had a lot of confusion this episode with the whole males being males and females being females, but I just want you to know that sex is your biology and your gender is also biological. Just putting it out there. Um, Once again, though, finally, the Department of Health and Human Services will be defining sex as determined by biology. Now, this is a story that's kind of been lost over the summer Mm -hmm. months because we've had, I don't know, Black Lives Matter riots. COVID, 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 COVID. And COVID, 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 and Black Lives Matter and all that. So when actual things happen that are good and right, we should really highlight them. So the statement from 
the Department of Health and Human Services said that HHS will enforce the rule by returning to the government's interpretation of sex discrimination according to the plain meaning of the word sex as male or female and as determined by biology. Biology, biology. Yeah, isn't it amazing? Thank you. Look, I know you're sitting there in your house thinking right now, gosh, Donald Trump is crude and rude. Gosh, Donald Trump says True. he twi- tweets True. too much. True. Gosh, that Donald True. Trump, he, he, he chews on a grudge like a dog on a bone. I get it. But here's another reason you got to vote for him over that drooling, hair sniffing, leg tingling creature living in his basement. Biology. If you think biology matters, if you think biology, science, empiricism, the scientific method, rational truth, if you think those things matter, well, look at what the, what Donnie Orange has done. He has reaffirmed at the Department of Health and Human Services that the United States government official position will be that gender exists. What? Stop. Sex, biological sex exists. Because if one of the first things uh, plugs Biden, Biden is going to do if you elect him is roll back all of this. All of those things that the, Betsy DeVos at the Department of Education have done has done to give due process rights back to males, males on college campuses accused of sexual assault. All that will be rolled back immediately if you vote for our cowering little commie in his basement. Well, and we know it will happen because the Trump administration had to change this yep. from the Obama, Obama administration, yep. which included Joe Biden. Now, according to Mary Beth Waddle of the Family Research Council, she said that under the old Obama rule, medical professionals could have been forced to facilitate gender reassignment surgeries and abortions, even if they believed this was a violation of their conscience or believed it harmful to the patient. So now that is finally going away. In this country, but in our neighbors to the north, it's already law. If you want to understand what these ideas of sex and gender and religious freedom are going to look at under a Biden administration, just take a look at what what, uh, Sox Trudeau is doing up in Canada. I'm telling you right now that you will see quickly the adoption of Canadian style rules when it comes to religious freedom. When you're when it comes to you're a doctor who doesn't want to a pr- perform an abortion, you believe it's wrong, you will not recommend a patient go for an abortion, you're going to be in a lot of trouble moving forward. You're a doctor who doesn't want to euthanize a 25-year-old woman who had a bad childhood and doesn't want to live anymore. If you do not give the order, you're going to pay a price for that. In Canada, they are driving out all religious objections to being doctors whatsoever. That will be coming here. And if you actually believe that that biology and the scientific method that undercuts it is a useful tool in promoting wellness and health for everybody, then that's not what you're going to get if you get Joe Biden when it comes to things like this. It's time now for some real education. Cimabue was an Italian painter and designer of mosaics from Florence. Indebted to Byzantine artists, Cimabue is considered one of the first great Italian painters to break from the Italo-Byzantine style. His figures were depicted with more advanced life-like proportions and shading than other artists of his time. Around the year 1265, Cimabue painted a wooden crucifix commissioned by the Franciscan friars of Santa Croce. It is one of the first Italian artworks to break from the late medieval Byzantine style and is renowned for its technical innovations and humanistic iconography. Take a look at this wonderful crucifix. Uh, and Cimabue, who was also known as Cene di Peppo or Cene di Peppi, that was his real name, Cimabue being a nickname for the fella, was, was uh, really a, one of those great innovators that got overshadowed and kind of forgotten by the, the non-art-loving public. But we owe him a debt of, of gratitude. Uh, you think about those medieval paintings. Think about those medieval paintings of crucifixes that abound, especially Byzantine ones. If you've ever seen any Byzantine art, you will know that you have lots of angels and lots of saints, but they're one-dimensional, right? The the Byzantines had not yet figured out how to use perspective. In fact, the Western world hadn't either. How do you project in painting so that you have depth, right? So that in the painting, you have multiple levels of interaction. How do you make a flat canvas ultimately two-dimensional, right? Where you can see backwards and forwards. Uh, it was amazing. The, the, the classical Greeks and Romans really weren't able to do it. Uh, nowhere in the world had it really been done successfully until the late Middle Ages, early Renaissance. For, for lack of a better word, Cimabue, and we'll look at his achievement here. Cimabue was a m- late medieval, very early Renaissance painting. But the thing that gets me about that crucifix 
crucifix there. First of all, you see how Byzantine it is, right? Do you see all the gold uh, laminate? You see all the gold overprint? You see the gold tonality of the image? That comes right from the Byzantines, right? All of their icons, their religious paintings, their iconographic paintings were almost all golden. And that golden was, was the color that was reserved uh, for saints and angels and Christ himself. And you can see the body of Christ, the halo, uh, the ends of the crucifix, the, the clothing that uh, drapes l- behind Christ's back. All of that is gold in the iconic Byzantine way. But but notice here, you've got something really, in fact, you've got actual icons. Look at the two images on either side of the extended hands of Christ. And what you see is old Byzantine icons, right? Notice how flat and one-dimensional they are. Those two little mini portraits at each of the ends of the hands of Christ are traditional Byzantine icons. They are Greek. Uh, they are, they're golden tinted. And there is no depth. There is really no depth between the human being pictured and the background. Now, that wasn't just bad technique on the part of the Byzantines. They're painting holy subject. And so the, the holy subjects. So the golden background, the background of heaven, and the individual are meant to be on the same plane to suggest their holiness. So it was a conscious act on the part of the Byzantines to do that, even though to our eyes it looks flat and one-dimensional. Now step back again and look at the way Christ seems to be floating against the back of that cross. I mean, here's a crucified Christ, but it's a crucified Christ whose human corporeality is actually lighter than the body, right? This is a Christ that's already multidimensional. Look at the way the legs are up against, the feet are up against the bottom. Does Is he nailed to that cross or is he floating on it? And that's a huge step forward. To go back to that close-up, Mike, and you can see it here too. There's a clear sense of space between the body of Christ and the cross that's beneath him. That's the beginning of what was going to be the development of perspective, right? The, uh, the, the, the artist that came immediately after him, Cimabue, Giotto di, Giotto di Bondone, he did this so much better than Cimabue had done it or than anybody else had done it so far that everybody forgot about people like Cimabue, who's a great artist. Bondone did it much better. You can see as it's painted on the wall, Notice the painted arch on the wall, and then the crucifix painted over the arch, and then the body of Christ painted on the, on the crucifix. There you have three levels of perspective. It's quite beautiful. The, the arch that's painted on the wall looks like it's an archway through something. The cross seems to be placed in front of that the body placed in front of the cross, in front of the art. And that's the genius that Bondoni and others would do, would would expand upon to give us the renaissance in painting. All right, as always, you can follow us on Facebook and Parlor. And if you have any questions, just visit freedomproject.com slash askduke and send them our way. Now we're going to wrap things up with our fun fact of the day. Now, college kids, I don't want you to miss out on all the fun scholarships that apparently I missed out on. So go to coffeeforless.com, which is offering a $500 scholarship for coffee lovers. Uh, If you're really tall, go to uh, Tall Clubs International. They're offering $1,000 to the freakishly tall people. And the Asparagus Club scholarship, which I definitely would have earned. They're giving out $1,500. So basically there's a scholarship for everything. You just have to go look for it. Or you could trip a Boy Scout in the middle of traffic and the Satanists will write, write you a check. And that's going to do it for our show. For Freedom Project, I'm Dr. Duke. She's Katie. Until next time, you stay educated, my friends. 